in Alaska, residents can dip net for salmon. And it's, uh, it's something else to see. I'll tell you what, you're going to see everything when you're out there. You're going to see little kids pulling in fish. You're going to see grannies pulling in fish. You're going to see people drinking beer and getting nutty. And, uh, you know, you, you might even see somebody fall over and get caught in their own net. We saw it. Anyway, we like to re refer to dip netting as production fishing. On a good day, it's as simple as dipping a big circular net into the water, and before you know it, you're going to pull out a bunch of salmon. It's a damn good time. Well, we certainly didn't crush it, but we caught a few nice fish. We were happy not to go home empty-handed. It's been a tough year. Hopefully next year is a little bit better. Hello, beer drinkers. This is how I do my salmon. Many of you out there may disagree with this, but that being said, if you watch 30 folks process fish, you'll probably find 50 different styles. Most important part to doing fish is keeping your fish clean, keeping them fresh, pull them out of the water, I'll cut the fillet off, package them up, keep them on ice in a cooler, keep the water off of them. Then when we get them home, we'll finish the fillets and dress them out real neat. You can see here, I'm going to pull some pin bones out. You can take your knife, find the little pin bones, and they can come right out of that fish. Most important things is having a good sharp fillet knife. Slide that knife right underneath those ribs leaving as much meat as possible. Then I also just try to dress the fish where they look attractive. And you can see here, these fillets are actually looking fantastic, but we're kind of cheating. These are sockeye salmon coming out of the Kenai. These fish are out of the water less than eight hours. And man, just, man, I'll tell you what, they look good. <laughs> and they are good. I'll tell you what, one of the one of the things that I really appreciate is uh, using that using that darn cup to load up your fillets. It, it seems like a great way to slide them into the slide them into the bags before you vacuum pack them. How do you come up with that? You know what? A buddy of mine showed me that and it, it, it's kind of ingenious. And you just slide that cup in there and it keeps the fish slime off the inside of the bag so you get a good seal with the vacuum sealer. On that heat strip so it works out pretty good yeah that's that's pretty slick it's ridiculous my dog acts like we don't feed her she's got such a good life and she eats well trust me so one last tip you're gonna see this vinyl tablecloth that's got some type of material on one side vinyl on the other Take that on your cleaning table. When you're done, just cut it off, wad it up, throw it in the trash. The table's clean. Easy does it. Minimal cleanup. And the most important thing, mama will be happy. That saves more time to drink beer. All right, we're mixing it all up. Hey, whoa, hey. Whoa. Don't you need a drink of beer before you do that? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Here's to the bra. All right. There's the brown sugar. Shoot. All right. Here's the kosher salt. Looking good. Uh, so, I guess we're going to uh, brine some salmon and a little bit of white fish. This is uh, black bass.
coho or silver salmon and then everybody's favorite the sockeye you can notice the difference in the color this fish is a lot more rich it's very good not to say that the coho is not very good it's just it's the most sought after fish I think in the world pour the brine on here and get a drink of beer Alright, in order to uh, press the fish down in the brine, we're just going to put two cooling racks on top, push it down, and it'll help totally submerge the fish. Yeah, while the fish were resting in the brine, Scott and I had a little extra time on our hands, so we decided to go get a workout in in preparation for hunting season. And uh, we went, loaded up our packs, went on a little hike, and uh, I'll tell you what, we ran out of beer way too early. But it was a damn good workout. We removed the fish from the brine, patted them down with paper towels, and then put them on cooling racks with a fan blowing on them. It was probably under 60 degrees or so in the garage, and then we uh, put them in the refrigerator overnight. The next morning, we set our smoker to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, loaded the salmon up, let the salmon smoke for about two hours before we made our first temperature adjustment to 140 degrees. Smoked it for another two hours, and then bumped it up to 175 degrees for the final two hours. All right, salmon's done. We'll let it rest for one hour, munch on some of it, and then vacuum pack the rest and throw it in the freezer for later. Man, it's gonna be darn good. So darn good, I bet Ginger would love to have a bite. Well, I guess fishing season's about wrapped up. Maybe a couple more silvers a little later. And I uh, guess we're going to shift gears and get in hunting mode. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's been a great fishing season. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to hunting and going on a bunch of wild adventures. Absolutely. From sheep to moose. To moose to who knows what else. We got it coming. So, hey, let's... Uh, Drink beer. Craft beer. But not too much. <laughs> <laughs>